Just a reminder, in case your mind is playing tricks on you today, you matter, you're important, you're loved, and your presence on this earth makes a difference whether you see it or not. Hey guys, so today is Tuesday and I decided that I wanted to go and find a place, a different place so that the, um, the background of my videos are different. So I'm gonna be driving around, I'm gonna find a really nice place. I just wanted to share with you guys the beautiful places around here that I really need to take advantage of because I don't. Um, I'm a very um, self-professed homebody and uh, I never leave the house. Um, but I should leave the house. I mean, people come to Napa to look at everything around here that you you guys don't get to see every day there's a car right there I didn't even see it it's um, very bright very sunny today is Oct the end of October October 30th and I really need to I really need to take take out the awning that is in my backyard right now but I can't because my next door neighbor not next door but the neighbor behind me has not done what he was supposed he said he was gonna do so um, look how beautiful this is. look how beautiful it is around here uh, I bet you that there's a, still a lot of tourists around even though it's October um, usually around the holidays there's not a lot but um, this is when the locals like me come out and take advantage of you know like not a lot of people at restaurants did I step on poop I hope not I kind of smell poop okay well there's a certain there's a, at a certain point in time um, when you're doing this and, and it's really your passion you really um, get a lot of ideas in your head you look at inspirations um, everywhere everywhere you look around I mean I get inspirations from like movies that I watch um, since uh, succulents are really really popular these days you see a lot of um, designs out there and you kind of get an idea of how to do some projects and how to make some planters and all that stuff but at a certain but you have to kind of make it your own it's like it's like when um, somebody is writing a song and um, or singing a, another person's song. Oh my gosh, I think I really stepped on poop. <laughs> okay, so sorry about that, guys. So um, what I was saying is there comes a point in time where you really should have your own creativity and your own originality because there's a saying that be original because everybody else is taken. So if you're gonna go and cop, you have to try to find, there's some videos out there that actually um, suggest like how to create, you know, be creative with your, with your um, content. There's some guy right behind me that's um, just really going fast and I think he's pissed off because I'm not fast I'm going fast enough um, you know but I haven't I haven't watched that video maybe one day I will but really to be honest when when you want to be a video creator and you want to do it because you're passionate and you just have this passion you really do everything in your power I mean it, it becomes something to eat live and breathe every day you know it's not easy sometimes sometimes I just draw a blank you know but and those are the days where I'm supposed to um, upload every four days and those are the days where I don't up upload till like six days later and maybe some of my content is really not a big whoop to do you know I'm here because this guy behind me is just oh it's just so annoying 
Okay, I'm here at Stag Leap, Stag's Leap Winery. Uh, I've never been here before, but it is worth finding out if I can park and talk to you guys. Look at this, you guys. Isn't that pretty? I mean, seriously. Stag leaps. I mean, stags leap. Who is this? Serno de Bergerac. Oh, the greeter. There you go. I wish I, brought, I wish I brought my chair. I can sit right over there and talk to you guys. But anyway. Now we can head back to the garden and see where um, I can f move things around, move plants around to see where they're going to thrive. Uh, it's going to be a matter of trial and error just to see um, in the growing season where they're going to be happiest uh, now that the sun has been shifting from south to more west in my garden that is um, like I said this is just going to be about um, from my experience how it's going to happen so since it's growing season we got to figure out where they're going to be happiest and then so they can grow much more and be more pro prolific in that area so let's go let's head on back so after a few weeks of this these two planters being underneath the awning here the little greenhouse uh it doesn't look like they're being they're happy so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move them up over to where there's a lot more sun. I'm not going to shock them as to put them in direct sun, but I'm going to put them somewhere over in the back where um, they would get more the morning sun, but not like an afternoon sun. It'll be afternoon shade. So I'm going to take them and then I'll show you where I put them. Okay, so right now it is after noon, after 12 noon, and if you can see here on this side of the garden, there's this big tree that is shading it, uh, and the sun is up here somewhere, like right there. So um, it is still under shade, but it's bright, bright shade, and when the sun is over here in the morning, because it moves from here to, that's the south. It moves from here to like right up there. And then in the afternoon, in the in the dead heat of the afternoon, excuse me, uh, there's this big tree that's shading it. So we'll see. We'll see what happens um, after a couple weeks. We'll revisit the, these two planters and see how they're doing okay and obviously that uh calancoe is it a calancoe tubiflora hmm. yeah it's a calancoe tubiflora i put i put it on the very uh corner there barely gets any sun it's it's very invasive if it is um getting a lot of sun so I like it where it's at right now because it's not really growing too fast. Then of course the aloes are right there and they're okay. If there's more sun there, it's going to be um, a lot more 
progressive. And um, this right here, I think the, the, this one needs either the, it's not really growing big or it does need a little bit more sun. So I'm just going to kind of um, monitor that one to see if maybe in the springtime I can move her but you know what it started with just this this one and this one but look how much it's grown see so maybe it does like it where it's at and maybe it's just need, it just needs to get used to it and then let's see the ghost plant likes a little bit more sun um, and it gets progressive because I'll show you later on. Uh, this guy right here from Willa Johnson from Tennessee, one of my subscribers, gave me this little plant and look how big it's getting. Mother of a thousand or mother of millions. So uh, apparently this um, Sedevaria um, Butterfield, um, Harry Butterfield likes it where it's at and it's not very picky because on the other side of the house I have it in shade and it's growing really really prog progressively the afterglow this afterglow I oh know it's this is the Fred Ives the Fred Ives this one right here um, I think it likes where it's at, but there it was uh, mealy bug infested. So um, right now it's doing great. It's not growing a lot, but um, maybe it likes it better in the shade. Although, if I come over here, see this Fred eyes? Look how many it has been pushing out. A lot. Ooh, I need to spray that later with uh, with my um, insecticide. I see some mealybugs in there. But look at the th the two. I think it's just three. No, there's just two that is growing pretty well in the spot, and it gets a lot of sun right here. Then there's one of my ghost plants, the pink ones. This is the rare ones how pretty um, these like the Sun so um, okay so it's just really a matter of um, trial and error if you're not sure okay so this guy right here is the carny color so set of area sedum echeveria that likes the Sun the rose, the rose, um, Sedevaria rose, Sedum, Sedevaria rose, likes the sun too. And so is that, um, Paraguayans and the jelly beans. Um, the, some of my jelly beans in the beginning did not want to grow progressively, but look at this. It, it was kind of, um, most of these plants are dormant in the summertime. They don't like a lot of sun, but um, some of them do. So it really depends on how hot and humid the um, the garden is. So I come over here. Obviously, my Jennifer. This Jennifer likes a little bit of sun, a little bit more sun, but it's doing pretty good. Um, we get shade too for for her. So. I think what's going to happen during the winter time, it's going to be more progressive because it likes the cold weather, I believe. And then look at all my um, puffy ones, pack of various. Those um, get part sun and part shade in the afternoon. Here's the Caribbean. The Caribbean likes the shade. Why? Because the leaves are very thin. So it does like a little bit of sun, but not a lot. So if I were you, um, what you can do is make cuttings out of your... If you see that something is 
sort of having a hard time growing, um, I would do cuttings, repot them, place it in strategic places of your garden, and then see if where it's thriving. And if you find where it's thriving, just put them all on that on that air in that area. Um, and it also depends on where you're at in the United States or um, overseas, wherever you're at. Um, you just got yeah, it's 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 a trial and error kind of thing. We in um, Northern California here in Napa were very very fortunate because our uh, climate is very conducive to the um, to the succulents. Look at this one. This is this right here. This jelly bean right here. And this jelly bean right here. Though, well, that one started as a plant, but this one right here started as a cutting, just like this much. And then it just started progressively um, growing. And look at the little ones over there. You can see the little ones over there? Just from propagation, like leaf propagation. And also, um, I sh I'll show you the Sunisho string of pearls right here. That was one strand of pearls. And it's just like growing like a weed, right? Especially um, during the winter time and the early spring. Uh, I just got to be a lot more diligent about spraying um, the whole garden with... Um, you know everything that I need to spray on there so that the the mealy bugs won't um, infest these guys because early spring is where they start to come out is where the, the hibernation ends look at this one look at this guy this is Echeveria Lilacina look how pretty this is so pretty. The, the leaves are very tough, but it doesn't like a lot of sun. This was under shade. There's a shade right there. Um, I need to remove this uh, shade because it need, they, need to do, they do need to get sun, a lot more sun now because the sun doesn't stay very long. But if I do that and those leaves fall down here, the detritus of these leaves when it starts falling will again start the infestation of the pests so I'm just leaving it up there for now until it is removed maybe so over there if you can see my ice plant um, they're just growing just climbing up the walls now um, I try to I try to uh, trim it so it doesn't get overwhelming but um, but it likes to it likes to crawl so here okay so here this is a an echeveria too um, what is the name of this oh this is a Jennifer this one is just like this this lady right here okay but this is this is um, crested that's why there's so many little growths everywhere but this one is just one um, from that big that big plant and look it was infested with mealy bugs and I was able to save it but look how pretty it's um, curling up you know when life gives you lemons okay so this these two plants I actually sprayed with insecticide because they were just so bad but look what happened it kind of stained it but that's okay as long as they're alive right and then these guys I repotted because it was getting too big for its britches um, yeah and then this guy I just pulled this this um, shelf out so it can get more sun because it was pushed in and I couldn't put anything in there because it's too much shade. They like they like some some sunlight. All right. 
And okay, so let's see. These guys, this is the Mexican snowball. This is supposed to be really um, tough and would just grow anywhere, but um, for some reason, mine likes to be under shade. I'm just removing all of these flowers because they're just useless. They're pretty, but they're useless. This guy right here, I need to see how it's getting too big for its um, pot. And it looks like it likes to be in a big, huge pot or either that or in ground. So yeah, look at this guy right here. This was my uh, dark moon. This was also attacked by the mealybugs, but because this is their growing season, um, I sprayed it with insecticide and now it's growing the green. So yeah, there's a lot of ways that you could save your plants if, if you catch it before it dies. All right. So this guy right here, this guy right here gets a lot of sun in the afternoon. So I just leave it where it's at. And I hope it cascades all the way down. It's gonna be so pretty. Um, but, and then look here, this whole planter right here gets a lot of sun, afternoon sun. This Ionium right here will get a lot of sun. And it looks like it is liking all that sun. Next on the list, um, Hernandez eye. This guy right here um, gets bright sun right there, see, but it's it's got its back turned towards the sun and this pole actually, this post right here is actually shading it and it, it seems to like it. But this guy right here died, see, because you know it is a climby it is a climby crawly plant but it was getting too much sun and the leaves are very very tender the leaves were very very tender so yeah um yeah so you, you as you go along you're gonna start um learning about your plants these guys right here are here because um, I'm spraying them with um, my uh, my mix because um, I need to, to spray it with that for every day for a week. So um, I haven't sprayed today, but I definitely will. And this one right here, it liked the sun, but then the mealybugs start to eat it. So I had to put her in the shade and start spraying them just like I sprayed these guys right here. This is... Um, I don't know what this is. What is this? I think this was a volunteer. Not sure about that. But look at this guy. This is the Belen or um, the Caribbean, I think, from the stalk. And I just cut it, and it's starting to get huge, bigger. And I'll show you the ones that I um, that I beheaded. Uh, let's see, beheaded ones. The beheaded ones are. Oh crap! Look at this one died. <gasps> oh no, my violet green queen. That died. It probably didn't get. It probably died because it had mealy bugs. And that's what I mean, you know, you can't get attached to them because it'll break your heart. So you just got to be ready for whatever life gives you. Let's see. Oh, I was going to show you this guy right here. So this guy right here was um, the growth from the beheaded um, stalk. And also this one. See if you look in the back there, there's the stalk right there. And this one is really wanting to thrive. Hi, Blue. Okay, so, oh, here's another one. 
this was this was um, under the shade like really really shady because I wasn't sure if it likes the shade or not and now it's so lush because um, because of the fact that it's really cool now and it doesn't get a lot of a lot a lot of sun but this was also this was also um, shaded shaded by that that um, shade cloth but I removed it because now I'm not getting any sun here whatsoever except for this little part right here and in the morning it does get some sun but not a lot so it's fine I thin this out this right here I thinned it out because look th that's dead mealybugs right there dead because um, I sprayed it with my insecticide um, I need to wash it out these set of <laughs> Semper Vivum in my experience I think um, I, I mean I, I shouldn't say I hate them because they're pretty and they're nature but I don't like them simply because they are so prone to mealybugs then here's the um, Echeveria mini bell look at the little growths the, this plant's not going to grow anymore it's going to stay small and so is this one um, and so is this one there's just some plants that are not going to grow big um, they just stay mini and look at this my stepelliformis <laughs> can you believe how many this started out with just three and then I got two, 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 two. I mean, everywhere. They're just everywhere. And this was, um, this is just a collection of, um, little, you know, babies that I put there. Here has been in the shade all year. And obviously, it likes it there. It likes the positioning uh, also the this um, string of pearls these two are always in the shade it gets a lot of bright light because it's high up but um, it does get a lot of shade so um, as long as I keep the water perfect which I try to um, it's thriving right now with how nice and then look at this one guys this one gets a lot of sun too, but just bright light, not a long, long sun exposure. But look at the pretty flowers! Pretty. Oh, it looks too. oh, I also, um, I also did a cutting over here, and I'll show you where. This is also under shade, and it is thriving even more. Thriving. The leaves are fatter and bigger and more profuse. So I think I'm going to try to cascade it over here just to make it look nice. Because it's walking. Oh, okay. So that's a cutting right there didn't mean to do that and it's just crawling everywhere that's fine well, this is a cutting now this calanchoe right here was from a cutting it's about this big and it was in this area right here that didn't get a lot a lot of like really heavy sun right now but in the summertime it did get a lot of sun although um, when the sun was over there it moved towards here so therefore that's why it's not um, so that's why it's prolific right now and what else? so this this whole um, sorry about the mess but this whole container right here was from um, arrangements that almost died because um, I didn't sell them so 
I just put them all, all the ones that are still alive, I put them here two months ago and look, they're just thriving. Okay. Oh my God. Last but not least, this whole shelving right here is where the babies live. The reason is because it doesn't get any sun, a direct sun whatsoever. It only gets bright light and only in the morning. By the afternoon, it's only um, just whatever brightness is around that hits it. Um, so this is where like the teenage and you know, things that I don't know what I'm gonna do yet um, live. So here, look at this one. <laughs> This is the one that I'm really, really proud of. Um, I think this this now needs a little bit more light because it is now it's now um, getting cold. So I'm gonna move it maybe over here so it gets a little bit more light because over there um, and way in the back is a lot of there's a lot of shade. So. That's what I'm going to do. And also, I don't want too much water to live inside because then, uh, because it's cold and, you know, it doesn't dry up fast in the incubators, um, it could rot. It could start rotting. So, and this is just from experience, you know, um, not, nothing scientific, just uh, whatever my experience in the past is, is what I'm telling you guys right now. Uh, okay. So yeah, so this this is where they live, and this is where I take my uh, my plants for arrangements and stuff like that. This right here is my uh, blue atoll green meadow, and this is going to go into a bigger pot now because it's getting too big for this this. Um, temporary hold holding tank but yeah so yeah so if you look over there over there over there all the echeveria lilacinas right here same thing I'm gonna move it I don't think this one will go down here so it still gets the the, the bright light this guy right here oops look at already See how they're getting so big already? They are getting big enough so that they can go in their own planters and ready to sell. Because I am gonna sell them. So if you guys, if you guys want any of these plants, I'm gonna wait until they get bigger before I sell them. But I will put them on Etsy. Um, just let me know, and then I will create an in uh, like a post for you guys if there's anything in my garden that you want to purchase um, they're going to be normally between three and five dollars depending on um, or more if they're kind of kind of rare um, so let me know and if it's available I will I will sell it to you look at this guy isn't that cool it's my hot dog plant what is it doing? What's it doing? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Flower? Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for um, being patient about the noise that's going around here. But um, I'll see you on the next one. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. Be nice though. Love you guys. Bye. XOXO.